Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix Online Meeting 251, 9th of February, our first meeting in February. It won't be our last. We'll talk about that because we are going to talk about the release for schedule because that's basically all that we're doing right now. As always, these meetings are recorded for those of you that aren't with us right here, right now. But Sean and Bob, Zach and Ron are with us. At least Ron was. He jumped in early. Hopefully he's still out there. He's been quiet. Anybody else that's out there, welcome. Go ahead and say hi. Love to see you guys. Uh, what are we doing today? We are doing the Wix 4 release plan uh, review like we have every week. It'll go quick. Um, I have a new bullet point, so we'll talk about that. I don't think it's going to be too contentious. Uh, then we'll do our issues review and triage. And then we'll come back for questions or comments and things that people want to do. So without further ado, let's go straight into Wix 4 release plan. We are working our way towards RC3 right now. That would be on February 23rd, so two weeks from now. That's why we shifted this meeting back three weeks. Um, and Sean was out uh, snowboarding, skiing. I forgot which it was, so otherwise playing in the snow. Um, and uh, so we are doing a another release on the 24th. We'll talk about the bugs that are in that and those kinds of things next. Uh, given that we have had enough bugs, I think we're probably going to have an RC4 because uh, we're doing RCs until we're like, yeah, that's good, and we're done, which will move, move us to, to general availability of Wix 4. But I'm kind of sticking a land, in, sticking a stick in the ground, a drawing a lay, line in the sand, something like that. Anyway, probably March 24th, roughly a month from now. Uh, that seemed about right. Uh, for some reason, it lined up perfectly. Uh, the 28 days and all that kind of good stuff of February that it would be exactly a month after February. Uh, we might do the 17th if for some reason things want to go faster, but I'm guessing it's probably going to be the 24th. And based off of the reception of RC3, then we will uh, do RC4 and kind of based on RC4, we'll see what comes up after that. So anyway, uh, we have a couple more weeks getting the bugs fixed. Let's go talk about all those bugs. Bob, you ready? Triage, review, all that kind of stuff? Let's assume I am. Yeah, let's assume I am. All right, I'll do that. We're going to start with triage. I need to change this. We're going to do triage and then review. So we're going to look at the new issues, and then we'll look at all the old issues that are open. All right, so this should be uh, the new issues that are here for triage. And one of them is actually quite old. So we'll go ahead and start at the top. Maybe, yes, all right, there you go, Bob. This would be 6567, check queues for latest compatibility. You haven't updated the bottom of all this, Bob. I do, I do. Um, I took a look at the latest available Windows 11 SDK. Um, ICE 103 is still broken. Um, so, okay, we, we have to do something. Um, my suggestion is to take the latest cubes from the latest Windows 11 SDK and just suppress ICE 103 when we're running validation on a merge module. Um, ICE 103 is the ICE that checks the new control events used to print EULAs and launch apps. Um, Wix, of course, has included that functionality since 2005, I believe, um, and does not use those new controls because they were, at the time they were introduced, available only on Windows 7. Ah, yes, the good old days. Um, I don't know how popular they are. Um, I, I will assert that including UI in merge modules is pretty funky. Um, so you combine the two, and I'm suggesting that we just suppress ICE 103 and leave it at that. Um, the documentation for ICE 103 is really useless. Um, so it's yeah. not clear how I, I, how anyone, including me, could go about re-implementing it um, in inside Wix. Uh, again, these are, we're talking about, you know, rarely used UI inside a merge module. I don't think it's worth the effort. Um, and I'm, I am perfectly comfortable just suppressing ICE 103 for merge modules. 
that gets us all the latest cubes. Uh, so we get you know, like R64 support, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, the only downside is that we're suppressing one ice that's known to be broken. One advantage of implementing it ourselves would be if we could um, we could get rid of the ice completely from our uh, suppress it completely. Mm -hmm. Yep. But uh, that uh, that had occurred to me. Um, unfortunately, the documentation doesn't say what it does. It just says that it validates them. Um, it doesn't describe what kind of validation is necessary. And, you know, there could be, well, it's, it's, I don't know. I don't know what it's doing. So re-implementing it without knowing what to do is Well, we'd have to futz with it a little bit. I think it's, it can't be doing that much um, uh, outside of uh, the, verifying that it's on dialogue scrollable text for MSI print. An MSI launch app has a little bit of complexity in the property that you have to pass to it because it has to be a formatted value or... I think, or a path, I guess you can. Now yeah. you're seeing what I saw. Yeah. So it'd be like futzing with it a little bit. Yep. Um, that is the best solution. If, if I knew that I could completely replicate the functionality of ISO 3 that is what I would do. I'm just kind of stuck on the, you know, if if we re-implement it and miss something, that seems worse to me. At least here we're going to say, yep, ISO 103 does not run. If we replace it with something that, you know, is incomplete, it seems worse to say that we're replacing. And unfortunately, it's implemented as a native DLL. So uh, we're there. going to have this a lot if we ever tackle this problem. So it's kind of when do we start doing those sorts of things? Um, and when we've done that in the past, it's been for reasons like this, where, well, not exactly. This is pretty, you know, lame. Um, the I forget, ICE 08, I think, where the, the the ICE was just implemented incorrectly. Yeah. This is just a you know, build bug of some sort. Harder to excuse. Well, certainly skipping it for merge modules is an option. Seems, I mean, that certainly seems us reasonable now. Really, just like would like to take a crack at not doing this one, running this ice at all. Well, I mean, the ice functions in you know Dar Ice Cube, but it does not work. It only doesn't work in Merge Module or Merge Module Cube. It's really strange. That's <laughs> so well, strange. They, <laughs> what did they do to break that? But yeah. Um, well, they, they tried to build the custom action DLL uh, with the subset of ICEs that run in Merge Mod Cube. Mm -hmm. And they just built it wrong. Yeah, okay. They didn't export it. All right, let's see. So... Uh, I really just want to suppress the whole ice to start nibbling down that long list of ISIS. I, again, don't disagree. It's, you know, I'd love to do that, but. The... All right, let's just suppress it from Arch modules. And because getting all the other ISIS is probably, it's definitely worth it compared to making this thing work in, in Merge mod. And then still going to have that concerted effort of, all right, so we've, re we've removed all the ISIS. 
we've re-implemented all the ISOs in Wix, so you don't have to run ICE validation anymore, but you still need to in case we missed anything until we get to the point where we have everything found, at least oh, the sample size. I don't, I don't know what, uh, I doubt we can ever like completely get rid of validation um, because of that. We could re-implement all the ICEs, but you know, we're, there's no spec. We're going off of, of documentation that, you know, sometimes is great, has examples and, and, you know, detailed logic about what happens, but yeah, then there's ICE 103. ICE 103 verifies the MSI print and MSI launch app control events. Thank you. Well, yeah, the control events say what they are, though. So, um, so it's right. All right, it has to be within these things. Uh, yeah. I, all right. I mean, you know, I I can take a stab at it. I'm just. It, no, the problem is we need the backstop a... that people can run all of the validation still, and know that it's uh that we're getting there and until we do a concerted effort to do that doing hodgepodge is just kind of probably missing things so yeah so you're right the easiest thing to do right now is keep it on merge mod so we can get all the other stuff because the chance that these are inside merge modules is less and then go from there in the future it's still a solving the ice problem is still just a larger problem at at, at whole all right, cool. Um, moving on, quiet exec actions hang while the launch process exit while keeping it standard out and standard error alive. Seven one ninety. Uh, Sean, I know you've been looking at this one. Heard the pull request. Yeah, on this and you one. had a pull request for this, and we've kind of been, uh, I guess, arguing. You would say about how to fix it, but. I guess a question I had was that his implementation is basically going to start the process and then wait for it to exit, and then it's going to stop reading the pipes that it created for it. So, you know, the child processes, you know, the, the bug is that the custom action is hanging because it's waiting for the pipes to be closed, but the process we're starting is duplicating the handles and then passing it on to child processes so that it doesn't get closed when the process we started exits. Mm -hmm. They passed on our handle to someone else and then went away and said, here, you are now tied to that thing over there. So if, if we go with Nier's pull request, then it's going to stop reading from the pipes as soon as the initial process exits. Does it, does it not work if the child process eventually goes away? Uh, I'm, I didn't look closely into what the example he gave, but if, you know, Postgres, this process is starting the Postgres server, then that child process is the Postgres server and it's never going to stop. Oh, oh, okay. So, right. So it, the parent process handed us off to a child process and said, here, talk to this. And then that child process never exits. <laughs> yeah. And we're like, all right, well, we'll talk to it. Whatever it says, we'll do that during the install. And then forever there we shall wait. Uh, that's no, this is, that's busted <laughs> no like we shouldn't oh this is so weird so it's when the parent process goes away stop talking to the child process no that doesn't sound right that could have all kinds of weird side effects like what yeah. if this is working for somebody today where you have a child a parent process that launches the child process the parent process goes away the child does its thing and then the child process goes away and everything works that could be working today right yeah, I would just have to wait for all that to finish. I mean, yeah, we whoever takes these handles and hands them along needs to close them and you know get done if you're going to launch it inside the install process. Yeah, no, this this is this could break other things. That doesn't make sense. Uh, 
either of you remember whether the silent exec custom actions would be affected? Or rather, could you use the silent custom actions, which don't don't do logging, to be able to run this scenario with you know a never ending child? I so you're basically quiet exec without the name pipe handling, without the standard error redirection. Yeah, none of that because we're not going to log it, so it doesn't matter. I don't remember off the top of my head whether there's a shortcut there. Yeah, I mean that seems like a reasonable workaround. Th this 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 solution, no, this is wrong. Like, this is a different problem. What's being requested here, and the solution isn't to close the pipes as soon as the parent process goes away. That's not the solution. <laughs> Because the parent process could spawn on the pro no, that, no, <laughs> like no, that that doesn't, no, that doesn't make sense to me. This whole thing doesn't make sense. Like, like Bob brought it. There could be that you want to run it in a different way, and that would be fine. But it would be a whole different system than what Quiet Exec is doing today, which is working correctly, um, and possibly even being used in exactly this way when the child process goes away. Right? Yeah, I feel like if we don't care about the output, then we need to launch it differently. Agreed. And if you're running into this scenario where the child process is going to live forever, then you need to take the option that doesn't care about the output. Yeah. Right. Yeah, agreed. And I like I've kind of lost track of the changes to Wix Quiet Exec, but I mean Wix Quiet Exec used to be, hey, set up a whole bunch of properties and stuff. I don't know if there's a way of passing parameters to Wix Quiet Exec. I don't know that we should. Like I don't know how we should expose the do you want to listen to the command line? The do you want to hook up the name the standard out or do you not want to hook up standard out? Like there you know, that could be a toggle if we had an element and all this other kind of stuff all feature work that could be implemented on top of quiet exec or maybe it's already done or uh or whatever or like bob's point of launching silent exec or whatever it was it was a long time i don't remember that um those are all options this is not an option to change wix quiet exec in this way You guys aren't saying anything, so I don't know if you guys are like, <laughs> don't disagree, or like, oh no, yeah, definitely should not do that. I, I agree, it should not replace. Yeah. This Maybe. behavior should not replace the existing behavior. This is new behavior that should go somewhere else, or as an yeah. option in Wix Quiet Exec. Yeah. That, that seems reasonable. All right, cool. Uh, there is a timeout as well. I mean, which. Yeah, okay, good. There is a timeout. I thought there was. Yeah. That would be another way of kind of working around that. All right, so that's quite exec action hangs when launch process exits while keeping it standard out and standard error alive. Unless it's that the child doesn't, like, unless exiting and then the child gets stuck, that would be different. But that just doesn't make sense that Windows would do that. But they're all just file handles getting passed around. When they get closed, we should be like, all right, it's closed, we're done. So really would surprise me if that was the behavior. Ugh. All right. Burn should have an informational version variable two. Two should, mm, okay. Uh, 7,200. Bob, you open this. Yeah, uh, we have a variable, built-in variable that is, that reports the, you know, quad dotted version. Um, but as the version with the commit ID is more interesting slash useful, I would say that that should be exposed as well. Installer informational version is the, I guess, yeah, or informational informational version. Okay. Whatever matches the other <laughs> name that yeah. Windows uses for informational. It's like a five uh, syllable word. Um, all right. I, installer info version. I, no, I don't know. Informational is just, I mean, if that's what it's called, I feel like there's a name for it. Maybe it is informational. I just forget that. that. Um, as far as I, yes, that okay. is the version. That's the, that's... <laughs> it's, it's 
That's yeah. what we call it. Uh, I, I don't have any problems with it. Yeah, makes sense. So especially if we're displaying in UI or something. Yeah. It's, uh, we have we have that version number in the log now. That was a mm -hmm. uh, change I made. Yeah, some okay. Point yeah. In the past, so. Probably having both of them would be a good thing. Yeah. Um building a harvest project oh, we're fails done? with WinUI and NetSix. Sorry, was there something else, Bob? Nope. I just Okay. I I, I will take seventy two hundred. Oh, I assumed. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, but, you know, sorry. When you said when you did in the log file, I just assumed you're going to do it in the. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well. My bad. My bad. Um, great. Thank you for taking that, Bob. Sure. Uh, building yeah, a harvest project with a WinUI and Net6 fails because it's massively nasty, everything that's going on. And then Sean figured out that you could make it work using .NET build because it's using a different MS build stack. Um, and then he got it working with .NET Build. So I think this issue I don't know, goes away I, or it goes up for grab. Or sorry, that's one of you guys want it. Um, it's like, yeah, okay. This is, I dislike the whole code path that this ends up in. So uh, ugh. anyway, anybody want this? Sean's well, like, I, I touched it enough. <laughs> Or the fix to his issue was to add the binding redirects. And if you do that, then it, project harvesting won't work anymore with like .NET 4.0 um, harvesting. So like mm -hmm. it would be a breaking yeah. change if we were to add the binding redirects. Right. Yeah. Well, and how long do the binding redirects work? Aren't they to a particular version, or can we make them a little bit more general? I, I'm pretty sure that they've basically fixed the version to 15.1, and they're never going to increase it. I see. Okay. Um, I, I don't have yeah, any interest I, in this. Heat continues to be a... This particular part in Heat is just... It <laughs> drives me batty with all of this. So like, yeah, not interested in this part. But do you guys want it? That's fine. Otherwise, we can stick it up for grabs and someone can pick it up for a future release when we're willing to kill .NET uh, for compatibility back there. Taking one step back. I, yeah. I, just, well, I, I thought we were pulling heat next time. So that's, that's a lot of it, too. So it's like, yeah, someone can go off and maintain their own version of it kind of thing. It's too bad because harvesting project output is is like a completely interesting yeah. thing to do, but Not it's all just the so way complicated. Is done. Yeah. yeah. All right, we can stick it up for grabs if someone wants to try to grab it and come up with an elegant solution. We could do that, but it doesn't sound like anybody here is interested in it. All right, uh, Wix component. <laughs> This person's attempting to do harvesting, and the I think the harvest stuff didn't show up. I think is the issue. Uh, this is seventy two oh four. The re I'm just kind of over this because trying to get this person to give data, they keep giving incomplete information. Then they say they they have uploaded all their work to a repository, which is great. It helps a lot, and the repository is empty. So now I'm just kind of like whatever. Um, I. I don't care. <laughs> I'm I'm just kind of like, all right, whatever. I'm making this too hard uh, to deal with it. So, um, does someone want to work on it? Because I'm kind of over it. I, I guess I probably should say that. I will say that the I'm not taking this. I'm gonna put one more thing saying, hey, your repo's empty, and you should go work on that. But this is turning into I don't know, not a bug. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I'm frustrated. Should with we it. convert it to a discussion? You know what? Maybe that's the answer is just convert it to a discussion and toss it over there and say, hey, someone can try to answer these questions. Yep, that's probably yeah. a good idea because now it's turned into can't get clear information from the issue. So turn it to a discussion. Great. And if something comes out of it, then they can try to open a clear issue. Ah, good idea, Sean. All right. Exception thrown after parse possible key path extension when file key path is set. Uh, 
7208. I opened this. I don't know why I left triage on it because it's in the compiler and I was just going to go fix it. Uh, but just for clarity, if you try to return a possible key bath that uh, is not a registry key, things do not work correctly. Uh, it crashes, which is really bad. You should be able to pass like a file as the key path. You should be able to pass ODBC as the key path. Not that I don't know that anybody would ever create an ODBC source, but you could. Um, and it looks like this might even be broken in three. Um, I didn't look that closely, but I think we only ever use this for creating reg keys in the Wix extensions. And yeah. this is a pretty advanced scenario. So probably nobody's ever hit it until um, I was trying to <laughs> use it for something. So anyway, I will fix the compiler to not crash and handle this bit correctly. Uh, it's already signed to me and we can remove triage. There you go. Uh, that's the story behind that one. Fun little issue that I am going to fix. All right. Wix4 RC2. Someone wants a better error message when the harvest directory cannot be found. And I think that would be nice if someone wanted to try to go figure out how to solve this. So if, does that, like, it's harvest directory, are any of you guys interested in picking it up? No. No. Okay. I just need a positive because I can't tell if sometimes some people are on mute. So Sean's like, I'm not saying anything and I don't get it. <laughs> All right. And away it goes well, up for grabs. You know, just speaking up sometimes means you, you're volunteering. So Yes, but if I say, careful. does anybody want this? And you both say no, emphatically, we're definitely done. Okay. <laughs> if you say nothing, then I'm like waiting. All right. We'll get the process down. All right. That should be triage. Um... That should be trash. I don't know. Refresh isn't going to work there. All right. I need to grab all of the Wix 4 issues for right now. Oh, I forgot to open that query beforehand. Let me pull it up real quick. Uh, I think it's that one. All right. This should be all Wix 4 issues remaining. All right. So we have a couple of Mark Triage. So we already talked about this latest cues for backwards compatibility. Uh, that was the first thing we talked about today that can get triage removed and we won't talk about it in triage again. Um, creating cabinets greater than two gigabytes is an error issue uh, from last week. I have not fixed it. I'm not going to get to it today. I want to just improve the error message when that happens. Uh, checkbox property ref. I already have a fix for this local. I'm just uh, finishing up several of these changes. So I have a bunch of these fixed. So I have the checkbox property ref fixed. It's a simple mistake. Set directory creates custom action error v4. I've updated the default scheduling for it, so it will be correct. Um, Wix three to four conversion results in no errors, but incorrect MSI. This is a more fallout of the tar target der refing a target der directory. Um, I'm adding an error message because we do create uh, the conversion runs and we'll create an MSI that could end up not building correctly. And so now you will get an error message to go along with it. That seems at the minimum that we can do. We can't fix it fully, but we can at least tell them, hey, by the way, you had this scenario. We've fixed your code, but it may have broken your code. And it explains that you need to create a new director. Anyway, um, upgrade code to instance transforms. I have, oh, and I have all these fixed. The instance transforms, I have a fix. I'm trying to verify create a unit test to verify it. That's proving quite challenging, but I'd like to because instance transforms are pretty funky. So if I can get a unit test validating it, that would be good so we don't have it slip up and get broken again. Um, using the old service config um, element causes a failure. We didn't have any tests for it because, well, don't use it, but I fixed it so it will work. I have that fixed locally as well. Burn should have informational versions. Bob just got that now. Um, so... Hopefully that'll get done. And then the exception thrown after parse possible keys. So after I get the upgrade instance transforms, I will get this parse possible key path thing fixed because this is a straightforward, honestly, it can take me long to write the test, then the fix is probably. And then all of these issues except this warning will be fixed on my side and I'm just gonna have to find time. This this warning is lower priority for me than actually fixing real bugs because or real bugs. I mean, it's improving error message, good thing, but not actual error issues. So, and all of these issues in here have been one word or two word changes. <laughs> they're, they're all very small, uh, subtle things like this upgrade service config, for example, the service, the MSI service config table and the MSI service config failure actions tables have been swapped. <laughs> the strings have been swapped. So the service config was going to the failure actions table and the failure actions were going to the service config. And of course that mapping did not work at all and, you know, chaos ensued. So it was a very simple, oh, well, that was a mistake. Easy fixes. So 
Um, I bring that up. I say that because all of our bugs, while important and vital to fix, have been relatively small and subtle things. Uh, so it feels... This is why I feel better about, yeah, yeah, the RCs are helping flush out bugs and the bugs continue to get smaller and smaller each time. Uh, so uh, it feels like things are going pretty well through here. So while this list looks long, um, it's not that long. And also if we look, we're looking the milestone for, um, not milestone, the projects for RC3, we would find that um, there's like 12 or so issues opened against it where RC2 had like 30 or so issues opened against it. So about half, that's pretty good. Oh, Ron, I totally forgot your pull request. Yeah, I need to go, need to go do that. All right. Um, and Ron has a fix as well, which is great. So uh, anyway, my the point there is that the... That we are on a trajectory that has fewer bugs each time. That's a good thing. And the bugs are becoming a little more subtle and uh, simple. They are simple to fix. So that all puts us on a glide path that um, feels pretty good. So quick update to all of you that are wondering, how's it going? It looks all right. Things are looking all right. I fixed, for example, I fixed one, two, three, four, five. I fixed five of these bugs right here in about two hours last night. Um, I just didn't stay up long enough to get them through. Well, I need to, and I, the test for the transforms is actually gonna take me longer than probably most of the fixes for them <sighs> as the case goes. So that's the state, things are going well. Moving on, unless there's any other questions about triage, things like that, did I forget anything guys? I think that's everything, right? Moving on. Two questions, comments, things people want to talk about. Ron already mentioned his pull request. Need to go uh, dig that out, look at that, make sure get that thing uh, um, completed. Anything else people are doing? Like I just said, RC3 uh, glide path is looking pretty good. Granted, we do still have two weeks, two weeks of time for people to open more issues and more things to happen. But at least in this last window, it feels pretty good. Uh, things are getting better. And I am curious to see what kind of things we see in the RC4 timeframe, AKA after RC3 comes out, or even in the next two weeks, I guess I could be surprised. Um, but it feels like it's slowed down quite a bit and we're getting to, I want kind of things again, as opposed to this doesn't work kind of things, which are very different. All right, I'm just kind of filling space. If there's anything else people want to ask about, talk about uh, RC3, we will have a meeting in two weeks. Uh, that would be February 23rd here, back here in two weeks. And we're basically going to be talking about, hey, RC3 should be good to go, right? Right, right? Yep. All right. Let's go do that. Um, given the bugs, I bet we could probably do RC3 next week, except I'm going to be out of town. So, um, and Bob and Sean have said they don't feel like doing it themselves. So that's where we're at. I feel like I filled a bunch of empty space with a bunch of random words that repeat what I've already said thus far. So in closing, we will be back in two weeks. We will do essentially the same process again. Hopefully there will be fewer issues to review. There will be fewer issues to review. Uh, and we will see whatever we get for triage. Never know. And uh, then the day after that, we will release RC3 and be on to RC4 and one step closer to releasing WISC4. So until then, I guess, keep it quiet. All right, until then, all you guys have a wonderful two weeks and we'll be back. Bye. Bye. Bye.